What's up guys, it's McNulty here. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are all doing well. So I promised that we were gonna have a look at these master emblems and that is exactly what we are gonna do today. So as I'm sure you will have all seen if you logged into your game, uh, we have this, what's the, what they're calling a generous tribute uh, where you get free emblems for a class of your choice. And this is to introduce the new master talent system. Um, so you can see that you can choose um, a emblem class of your choice. We've got obviously 10 different emblem classes to choose from, and they're going to give you a full set of 50 master emblems, and they're going to give you 500 of the regular emblems for that same class. Now that is the exact amount that you need to unlock the nodes up to level 25 for a single hero. The big question though is which of these classes do you start with? Um, you know, which emblems are the best for the, you know, which emblems are you going to get the most use out of? And especially if you're not spending any money on pulls at the moment, you know, or you don't want to spend any money on these emblems, it's pretty important that we kind of get our picks right. Now, the way I understand it is that when the quests come around, the quests will be specific to each emblem. We may see two emblems on a single quest like we do with the legendary troops. Um, but for now, it's about making sure that you make the right choice right off the bat. Um, so what I've done is basically if I've gone into my roster here, I've just taken 10 heroes from the different classes so that we can have a look at each of these new master talent grids. So we'll just go ahead and we'll start with the ranger class for Medea. So if we open up the talent grid here, um, you'll be able to see that you've now got uh, a total of one, two, three, four, five new slots, <laughs> slots, five new slots. Um, and these talents are going to be unlocked using the master emblems. Now, you can also use golden emblems if you want to. Um, so if you do have some golden emblems stored up, then you might be able to do more than one of these heroes. Um, and I believe the Golden Emblem will not um, cost you any food or iron um, or any of your regular talent emblems. So that is something to bear in mind. Um, now, in terms of the Ranger class, if we just go back to the regular talent. Um, so the normal talent for a Ranger is a 25% chance to bypass defensive buffs, including counterattacks. If you increase that on the talent grid now, um, the superior or the master talent, uh, the master pierce is going to add 5% chance to bypass defensive buffs, including counterattacks. And if the buffs were bypassed, um, then the following effect is also activated. The target gets a negative 20% defense for three turns. So they are adding an additional effect on top of the original one, and they're increasing the bypass chance. So basically what that means is for a hero like this, um, you are if you unlock the master talent, you're going to get a 30% chance to bypass defensive buffs, including counterattacks. And then she will have a chance to apply, um, or sorry, the target will get, if that is triggered, that 30% chance is triggered, then the target will also get negative 20% defense for three turns. So it's pretty good. Um, and, you know, it is a good um, update to the Ranger class, um, but it's not a huge increase in terms of the chance to bypass. So from 25 to 30 percent is really not very much. Um, and the negative 20 percent defense down for three turns. Again, it's not really that much. Um, so there's nothing super effective about that. What I will say about these master talents is that the amounts that they increase the stats by are pretty big compared to some of the others. So if you if you have a look at this first node, on the attack node, will increase the attack by 50 points. Um, now, if you compare that to a normal attack node, increases, increases the attack by 15 points. Again, there, 15 points. So that is a pretty huge increase, and it applies very similarly to all of the other nodes. Now, if you look at the defense, for example, increases defense by 60 points. And if we look at a defense node on this talent tree, increases the defense by 18 points. So you're looking at 
you know, pretty much three to four times um, the amount of increase in stats that you would get from a regular node on the other talent tree. So even though we're only opening up five additional nodes, um, we're probably opening up closer to what would have been about 10 to 15 new nodes in terms of the old emblem tree. I hope that makes sense to you guys, but basically it's important to know that these increases are much, much higher. They're also, you know, more where you can choose. So if you're going to go attack, it's all attack all the way down um, and even on the left hand side. And if you're going to go defense, it's all defense all the way down. So that is interesting. Um, you know, even the health increase by 50 points. Let's just have a quick look here. Uh, this is the big one. So health increase by 3%. That's not really relevant, but they're 36 points. So the health increase is a bit lower. Um, but the attack and defense increases in stats are definitely a lot higher uh, for these new Master Emblems. So that is the Ranger class. Pretty all right um, for the talent grid on that one. Um, now let's move over to Nautica. So she is a wizard hero. Um, again, just to recap, the original talent is Jinx. So when dealing damage through normal attacks and special skills, it's a 25% chance to deal 15% extra damage per each active buff. Now, if you do unlock the master talent on the um, wizard emblem uh, grid, um, then when dealing damage through normal attacks and special skills, it's 5% increased chance to deal 25% extra damage per each active buff. So basically, it says on um, the little blurb that we read, it's not exactly the same on the card, um, but basically when you unlock the master talent, that will unlock um, and it will replace the original talent. So you can see here it's a 25% chance to deal 15% extra damage per active buff. If you unlock this, it's going to go up to 25% extra damage and the percentage chance is going to be increased by 5%. Um, so it's going to be a 30% chance to deal 25% extra damage uh, per each active buff. Okay, so that's basically what that's going to do. It's going to replace the existing talent when you start to unlock the master talent or when you finally get to that level uh, 25 on the grid. Um, I Do I think this is better than the ranger talent? Yes, right away off the bat it is better um, because there's a chance to deal extra damage uh, per active buff. Although for a hero like this with Nautica where she's not actually dealing any damage and this is where you've got to be a bit... Um, selective shall we say um it's not going to have as much of an effect because she's not going to be dealing any damage um so therefore you're not going to be able to get anything out of increasing the talents for nautica so you've got to be aware of whether you're leveling a healer or whether you're leveling a hitter um the jinx talent definitely works better with heroes that do damage rather than heroes that don't um, so yeah, unless we, we're talking about the superior jinx, but we'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, now let's move over to the rogue talent class. Um, so obviously the rogue is one of my favorites, 20% chance to dodge special skill damage. It's pretty straightforward. It's very, very straightforward. Um, and I love it. It's a fantastic defensive talent. Um, now, if we look at her talent grid, if we do start to look at unlocking the master talent, it's going to be an increase of a 4% chance to dodge special skills, special skill damage. If the damage was dodged, then the following effects are also activated. This character deals 50% damage to the attacker. It's really not that big of an increase on this one. So very similar to what we saw with the um, the master talent on the ranger class. It's a 4% chance to dodge. So it's going to be 24% chance to dodge in total. Um, and then if, they, if the effect's activated, they're going to deal 50% damage to the attacker. So basically half of a slash attack, which really isn't very much. So do I think this is a great... Um, Master talent to unlock? Not particularly, no. Um, so, so far, Ranger's okay. Uh, the, um, <laughs> I'm losing my classes. The Rogue class is all right. Um, but the, the um, Wizard class is probably the best out of the three that we've looked at so far. 
Um, now, for the Paladin class, so moving on to this one, um, again, we'll just have a look here. So if the character received any damage by the end of the enemy, enemy turn, it's a 25% chance to activate uh, an additional 25% defense for two turns. Very straightforward, pretty decent talent class for defensive heroes, doesn't really do much else. Now, if we do unlock the master talent for this one for the um, Paladin, we're going to be looking at an additional 5% chance to give, uh, again, it's exactly the same 25% defense for two turns. So you're just going up from a 25% chance up to a 30% chance to activate the talent. It's really very straightforward and nothing to write home about. Um, now, things are starting to get interesting now. So if we go into this hero, um, now we are talking about the season one heroes with the superior talents. Um, and this, I'll just say it right away, this would be my recommendation if you feel like you are going to be limited in terms of where you're able to use these talents, because not only do you get a superior talent, you get a superior master talent with these heroes, and you get to use the talent across multiple different classes. So you've got the monk class, you've got the ranger class, you've got the barbarian class, you know, you've got all these different classes that you can use your talents in just by getting the talent for this specific class. So let's have a little look at what the talent is. So superior withstand 50% chance to resist status ailments. If status ailments are resisted, then the, uh, the character deals 100% damage to the attacker. So it's a much higher chance to resist status ailments. And if it's triggered, then they deal a decent amount of damage to the attacker. Now on the talent grid, if you unle unleash, uh, I say unleash the master withstand, it's an additional 10% chance. So it's you can see there it says superior master withstand. So it's not just the regular one, it's a superior master withstand talent. So it's 10% chance to resist status ailments. If the ailments were resisted, the following effects are also added. So it's the 100% damage, Plus, it cleanses the newest status ailment from this character. So now you've got a 60% chance to withstand or resist status ailments. And then you've got a 60% chance to deal 100% damage, 60% chance to cleanse as well. And remember, they get the Toon passive. If you are looking at the Toon heroes, you may not be looking at Toon heroes. You may just be looking at other heroes, but they still get the superior talent. And that just adds to the usability of these heroes. So with that being said, this is a common theme right now. I would definitely recommend using your first batch of emblems on one of these heroes where they get the superior talents. Um, now, if we look at, obviously, we've got the other superior talents, superior pierce, which is now a 60% chance to bypass defensive buffs, and it, the target receives 318 bleed damage over three turns. On the master talent, we're looking at an additional 12% chance now uh, to bypass these defensive buffs and then the bleed damage, and then also a negative defense to the target. So again, a far superior talent um, on both the regular version and uh, the master version of the hero as well. Um, and then we've got the superior wound as well. So again, looking at the talent grid here, you can see after any normal attack, 10% increased chance to activate 80% of the damage done. Um, and then the character gets 30% attack increase um, for three turns. So that is also a much better effect um, than you get with the regular one. Again, like I'm not the hugest fan of the, <laughs> of the Barbarian class, um, but it's still better that you have the option to change things around across three different classes. Um, you know, and to use three different talents just by unlocking one one hero's grid. Um, the same will apply for the um, fighter class. So we've got Magni here. Um, I think the, the, well, so far, I really do like the uh, superior resist um, on the monk class. I think that's a really fantastic option. Um, so monk heroes are definitely going to benefit from this. Um, and then with Magni, so we've got the superior revive. So when receiving a fatal attack, it's 35% chance to revive at the end of the turn. 
if revived, then the character also gains 50% mana. That's a fantastic effect, um, the superior revive. I know it's come in really, really handy um, with the costume for um, Vivica as well. Um, I've seen it really, like, it, it's definitely very impactful when they revive and then they suddenly are completely ready to go again and fire off their special. It can definitely make the difference between a win and a loss. Now, if you unlock the master talent for a revive hero, or at least the superior talent for the revive hero, then it's an additional 7% chance to revive. The character gains 50% mana and an additional 25% attack. So the special skill is just going to hit that much harder upon the character's revival. So I think it's amazing. Um, so that's now going to be basically a 42% chance to revive. Um, and if they're revived, they're going to gain 50% mana and 25% on the attack. Um, so yeah, the superior revive, excellent again. Um, and then we've got the superior dodge talent, superior evade, 30% chance to dodge special skill damage. If the damage was dodged, then the character and the nearby allies get a 15% chance to dodge special skills for the next three turns. Again, it's impacting more than just the one hero. Um, and then on the master talent um, or superior master evade, it's an extra 6% chance to dodge the special skill damage. So, I mean, compare that to what we just looked at. That's 36% chance to dodge special skill damage versus with Constance, we said if we did her superior talent, it would be 24% chance to dodge special skill damage and then no effect to the nearby. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Um, and then no effect to the nearby uh, allies either. So yeah, definitely, definitely consider using the superior evade. And that is a good talent as well. Um, and then what do we have here? Superior companion. Oh, yeah, I hate that they nerfed this, honestly. And it's really, it's having a bigger impact now that we're seeing these superior talents. And especially where you've got heroes like the Garrison Guard, which is summoning mega minions just right off the bat. You really want um, these superior companions to be a bit more hefty um, or even to do some kind of effect attached to the minion. As it is, it's just a pretty decent meat, meat shield. Um, so the thorn minion with 20% health and 20% attack um, can keep your character alive a little bit longer. Um, so it's a 20% chance to activate that. On the superior um, master companion, um, the damage, oh, sorry, um, so it's a 4% chance, an additional 4% chance, so it's going to be 24% chance to get the minion, um, and then it has 30% health and 30% attack, which is basically going back to the same as what it was. Um, so yeah, that's annoying. But anyway, it is what it is. Um, okay, and then moving on to Guardian Hippo, so she is a Barbarian. So we've pretty much looked at this already. So it's a 30% chance to deal 60% damage, 60% of the damage done by the normal attack over five turns. Um, good comparison to make will be to compare this to this one. Um, so it's a 60% chance, 50% chance to deal 60% uh, of the damage done over five turns. So it's a much higher chance. So that's at 50%. Hers is only at um, 30%. And then it's the same amount of damage. But if you do unlock the superior or the master wound, uh, then it's going to increase to 80% of the damage done. And it's going to increase the chance of doing that damage by 6%. So it's going to go from 30 to 36. Um, again, like I said before, you know, with the other heroes, the superior, the ones that benefit from the superior, it's going to go from 50 up to, I think it was 60 even, um, sorry for going so much out and back in, but I just want to make sure, um, so it's going to go up to, it's going to go up by 10%, so yeah, 60% chance, um, so more than one in two chance to deal the extra 80% of the damage done, um, over five turns, so again, Definitely worth focusing on the superior or the season one heroes. Um, Lady of the Lake, we've got the um, 
the da, 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 da. <laughs> delay talent yeah i was a bit delayed in that one um but yeah the delay is a 15 percent chance to drop the mana generation of the target by 50 percent for two turns it's a good talent on defense um but it's not really going to come into effect that that much anywhere else and you certainly aren't going to notice it um if it does so yeah defensively i think it's a pretty decent talent um, but on offense, really not very useful. Um, if you do unlock the master um, delay, it's going to be an extra 3% chance to activate. And it's going to drop the mana generation by the same amount, 50% for two turns. And the target's going to get negative 20% attack for two turns. So really not that great of a talent. So yeah, I'm not, not the hugest fan of that. Um, and then Willow, we've already looked at this one with the master talent for the Druid class. I'm really not a huge fan of the companion, even the, you know, the master talent companion. It's just increasing it to 25% health and 25% attack. Um, but the chance is still pretty low. Um, it's only up, up to an 18% chance if you do unlock that talent on the talent grid to summon that little thorn minion. Um, and then the cleric class. So cleric is on in and of itself a really good class. 35% uh, chance to resist negative mana effects and effects that present prevent the use of special skills. Sorry. Um, if we do unlock the master node, um, there's going to be an increased 7% chance to resist negative mana effects and effects that prevent the use of special skills. If the effects are resisted, the character recovers 10% health. This one's good. Um, so yeah, the cleric class is really a decent one. Even if you don't have the superior um, mana shield, it is a decent one to consider. So out of all of these, you know, if you're not going for um, superior heroes or season one heroes with costumes, which I would highly recommend, I would say the Jinx, but only for certain heroes. Um, so the wizard class, um the monk class is actually a really good one as well this the revive um, but again like i say it's really going to be quite specific um and then the cleric class so those would be my top four recommendations um in order i think i'd probably go um wizard monk uh fighter and then Actually, no, wizard, cleric, monk, and then fighter. So that's the sort of order I'd go from like fourth place up to first place. Um, but one other thing I do just want to mention as well. This is going to be a biggie. Um, so basically, the superior jinx is so powerful um, that I think it's really going to be worth considering um, if you do have... Um, heroes that are going to benefit from this um like sartana for example um that you would consider leveling them or you would consider giving them the master talent node um so it's to dispel all active buffs from the target before damage is dealt um, and there's a 50 percent chance to do that as well as to deal the 15 percent extra damage if we go on to the talent grid um, and we did unlock the superior master jinx, um, then it's an extra 10% chance to deal a 25% extra damage and to dispel all active buffs from the target before the damage is dealt. Um, so the other thing about this is that the talent nodes on the superior talent nodes for these heroes cost less. Um, so I'm going to actually have to go to this version to show you, um, but they only cost five of these emblems. So you could actually level, um, technically you could do two four stars um, rather than just a single five star hero. Um, you know, if you use four stars a lot and heroes like Li Ju would be a really good example of that. Um, but just bear in mind that you're only going to be able to choose on this offer, you're only going to be able to choose one specific um, emblem class. So yeah, pick carefully, but if you did choose this one and you had, say, two costume lijus ready to go, then this will give you enough materials to level both of them and to benefit from that humongous stat boost um, and probably one of the best talents in the game. So yeah, in summary, um, 
<laughs> am I a fan of these emblems? I'm not sure yet. I've still got to see how they work in practice. I don't like the way that they've spread them across all of the different heroes. I think that it should really have been limited to older heroes. And you guys know that by now from watching my videos, if you have. Um, but with that being said, I would highly recommend using them on the Toon heroes. <coughs> Pardon me. And also on heroes with the superior talent. Um, so yeah, with that being said, I am going to make up my mind. Um, I'm not going to do it right here and now because I've got a lot of heroes to look at. But I hope that this video has given you a bit of insight into how is best to go about looking at these new master emblems. Um, and where you can get the most use out of them, the most bang for your buck, so to speak. Um, so yeah, please do uh, let me know in the comments what you guys have chosen to do. Uh, let me know if you think I've got it right with these emblems. Also, do drop us a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you all again in the next video. Bye for now, guys.